Francine is almost a hurricane in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. Let's talk about the latest as of Monday evening. Alright, good evening. I'm Texas Storm Chasers Baldy and Chief David Reimer. It is about 8 p.m., 8.15 really, on Monday the 9th of September 2024. We're monitoring... Tropical Storm Francine, which as of 7 p.m. is located about 145 miles southeast of the mouth of the Rio Grande, which is about near Brownsville, uh, or 425 miles south-southwest of Cameron, Louisiana. Maximum sustained winds have increased to 65 miles per hour, and the minimum central pressure is down to 992 millibars, which is down from earlier today. So the lower the pressure, the more organized the system, and the system has actually gotten more intense today than we thought it would in the short term. We thought it would take until probably tonight to get its act together, but it was able to organize pretty quickly earlier this afternoon, late this morning. It looks like that intensification may have paused a bit during the afternoon, or at least slowed down, and now we have hurricane hunters back in the system, and we're going to be able to keep an eye on the intensification trend, but the pressure is down from earlier today. The system is moving to the north-northwest at about 7 miles per hour. Now, we're going to talk a lot about the Texas impacts here. We'll also touch on Louisiana, but system moving north-northwest right now is expected shortly in the next few hours to turn north, and then it's going to start getting tugged northeast by late tonight into Tuesday morning. As that occurs, we could see an area of tropical storm force winds, at least 40 mile an hour wind gust in portions of the Rio Grande Valley and deep south Texas, places like McAllen to Brownsville, South Padre Island. As the hurricane tomorrow moves northeast, we could see some wind gusts, breezy conditions along a majority of the Texas Gulf Coast, where tropical storm watch is in effect for a majority of the Texas Gulf Coast. Landfall for, of what could be a Category 2 hurricane with maximum sustained winds near 100 miles per hour. Expected probably in south-central Louisiana, probably not all that far from where Laura made landfall back in 2020. Uh, Wednesday afternoon around lunchtime, the timings moved up a bit. And hurricane and storm surge warnings are now in effect for the Louisiana coastline from pretty much uh, the Texas-Louisiana border all the way east with some watches to New Orleans. Now, based on the current trajectory, let's talk about the probability of storm surge issues. But first, actually, let's talk about the latest guidance. This is the just-in model plot data from the tropical weather model showing the track forecast for Francine. You can see there is good agreement here with the spaghetti plots that this is going to be a Louisiana issue with that north turn taking place now, moving northeast and making landfall Wednesday afternoon, but it may not move that much over the next 24 hours is what also is being shown here. So pretty high confidence this is not going to be a direct issue for the state of Texas. Now here is what is going to be probably the most problematic outside of some gusty winds and maybe a bit of rain on the coast. That will be a storm surge with Francine lower latitudes than the Texas Gulf Coast as it moves northeast tonight and tomorrow we could see onshore winds bring one to three feet of storm surge above the typical water values or typical tide levels from the mouth of the Rio Grande all the way up to High Island including Galveston Bay so some minor coastal flooding possible there is the possibility we could see a three to five foot storm surge from High Island all the way to Cameron, Louisiana, including, you know, the Golden Triangle. Then from there, storm surge gets quite life-threatening from Cameron, Louisiana, all the way to uh, pretty much the mouth of the Mississippi River, 
with a 4 to 10 foot storm surge and a lot of Louisiana there is very low lying and that storm surge could try to make it all the way up to interstate 10. So again, this is going to be an issue for us until the system makes it north of your respective latitude on the Texas Gulf Coast. Once that happens, the winds are going to switch from onshore to offshore, and it's going to push the surge out. In fact, we may have some low water issues on Wednesday in Galveston Bay with northwesterly winds. Uh, In terms of the forecast wind potential. Here's the most likely arrival time and the probability information for at least tropical storm force winds. That's winds over 40 miles an hour. You can see there is a decent chance of some strong winds tonight into Tuesday morning. The Rio Grande Valley uh, up towards the coastal bend. We could see some wind gusts of 40 to 50 miles an hour on the immediate Texas Gulf Coast. Otherwise, really, it's going to be just, it's going to be a breezy day on Tuesday and Wednesday from the coastal plains, southeast Texas, into the Golden Triangle. Golden Triangle, we'll have to keep an eye on it. We could see some wind gusts up to 50 miles an hour, but this is not a burl repeat. I want to emphasize that since this has taken more of an easterly track, it is going to keep it further off the Texas Gulf Coast. A Louisiana problem, we're not going to be in the inner high impact, high hurricane force wind core here. So it does not look likely this is going to be a high impact event for the state of Texas. This is going to be a glancing blow with minor impacts in the wind department. That being said, we'll keep an eye on it. But I also want to be realistic in the sense that this is not likely to be a super big deal for Texas in the wind department. In terms of the potential for heavier rain. So let's take a look at that. With this eastward shift, we've also seen rain totals decrease for most of the Texas Gulf Coast. You can see the best chance of rain probably tonight or tomorrow morning for the Rio Grande Valley. We could see maybe two to six inches of rain around Brownsville, South Padre Island. With the eastward shift and a pretty sharp western delineation and the precipitation shield being on the clean side of the hurricane, at Corpus Christi, you may not even see much in the way of rain at all. Same goes for Houston. Uh, we could see maybe an inch or two of rain in Beaumont, Port Arthur. But otherwise, uh, it's all going to be over the Western Gulf. And then up into Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, Tennessee, Alabama as the system moves inland on Wednesday and Thursday. So the way it looks now for Texas, we're going to have to keep an eye on it. But our impacts will involve some minor coastal flooding with the storm surge tonight, tomorrow, eventually switching to an offshore flow, pushing the water away from the coast, maybe some low water conditions at times, with a nasty, nasty storm surge potential from maybe High Island all the way to the mouth of the Mississippi River. We will have to monitor the surge in the Golden Triangle just in case this shifts a little further west. We're able to push more water towards the Golden Triangle, but at this point, this is going to be a Louisiana problem, and that is reflected with pretty high confidence here in the latest track guidance, in the latest National Hurricane Center forecast, with landfall around lunchtime Wednesday near Cameron, Louisiana, south of Lake Charles, where a impactful strike from what could still be a formidable hurricane is anticipated with intensification, perhaps quick intensification tonight into Tuesday, leveling off as conditions become less favorable for intensification on Wednesday, but still likely to remain a formidable hurricane at landfall on Wednesday afternoon. So we'll keep an eye on things here. I know we're going to have Storm Chasers heading out to Louisiana, so we'll have live streaming video on the Texas Storm Chasers YouTube. As for our impacts in Texas, again, uh, really minor and confined to the Texas Gulf Coast with, at this point, inland regions of Texas outside of East Texas, likely not even going to see a drop of rain out of this. If anything, we might, we'll might we have to keep an eye to make sure we don't have any uh, gusty northwest winds at times, which could locally increase the fire danger in East Texas in the Arklatex Wednesday and Thursday with warmer temperatures, drier conditions, and, I mean, lower humidity. So we'll keep an eye on it. But that is your evening update. We'll keep updates on the social media channels tonight, and we'll have additional video updates in the usual Texas Weather Roundup, bright and early Tuesday morning. Y'all have a good night. God bless.